Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Band Together Leadership Seminars. My name is Paul Everts. I am the CEO and founder of Band Together. You can reach me at my email address, which is B-A-N-D, the number two, gather, at comcast.net. Also, please check our website, which is conductingmylife.com, where you can get one of my books called conductingmylife.com. Just telling you, it's really good. If you don't believe me, go to amazon.com and you will see the reviews. If you want one, I got a bunch in the garage. Just contact me at bandtogether.comcast.net and we can uh, figure out a way to get you one. All right? It's a good deal. You'll love it. It's a good book. Also, go to curriculum. Go to my curriculum tab and you're going to see... John Maxwell, part of the John Maxwell team. John Maxwell is a New York Times bestselling author, wonderful human being, really our Norman Vincent Peale of my era, my age, and uh, I would love to come out with your group or with you and learn how to be better people. Better people make better leaders, and Lord knows we need better leaders. So, I have a blog that I do. Um, first of all, we're back in the man cave. If you haven't seen it, we, this is the man cave. Haven't been here for a while. It's hotter than blazes out here in Northern California. I'm just saying, it's June the 1st, 2021, which means we're in the hundreds already. It's June. Um, I wrote a commencement speech. Never been asked to give a commencement speech, so I just do it. I've done it last year and this year, and I might do it a couple more years ahead of time. I've taught high school since July 3rd, 1989. So I just finished my, I guess, 32nd year of teaching. Uh, what a year. With COVID, uh, with riots and uh, protests, critical race theory, equity, you name it. Um, I just wish that we would look at reading, writing, and arithmetic again and love the kids. Um, I think the students want to learn how to read. I believe the students want to learn how to do math, at least get through paychecks and bills and that kind of math if they want to do Rocket engineering, great. Go to calculus. Don't take calculus away from kids. Um, had a great interview yesterday with the uh, one of the students, 4.0 students from John Adams Academy. It's a charter school here in Roseville. Um, gives me hope. Kids give us hope. Children give us hope. Um, and with that being said, they are looking to us, adults, to learn how to be better people. And I, I don't know. I'm really looking at the fact that we have people that are don't understand what their role is as an adult, is to be a model of who they want their children to be. Pretty simple. Let's look at the commencement speech. First, as always, and since July 3rd, 1989, I tell my students, I love you, and I do love you. You mean a lot to me. One of the cool things about being a high school music teacher, more often than not, much more often, and sorry for the poor language there, um, I'm a music teacher, not an English teacher, and writing is a, it's like a hobby for me. It's like golf. They're both humbling. The students who are in my music classes choose to be there. So any human being who chooses to be with me is a blessing, a gift, and I am honored. One more time, and it will not be the last time, students. I love you. My thoughts for my students today is, please, block the idea that the outside of you or anyone is the best side of you and the most important side of you. I need you to block that crap. What is the best side, or really could be the most important side? Well, it's your heart. And I need you to guard your heart. And that's how I've been doing my last five letters to my students on the blog. I consider you to be a student if you're watching this as a, I'm a teacher. So let me go ahead and give you my commencement speech. And I hope that you like it. And let us know. Send us a comment. Good evening. We need to begin with the American dream is alive and well. For the next five to seven minutes, I am going to share with you in a time of coming out of the response to the COVID-19, the riots, the protests, and the possibility of more uprising, anarchy, economic disaster in the form of inflation, how the American dream is alive and well. First, let's take a look at James Truslow Adams' 1931 book, The Epic of America, as featured in John Maxwell's book, Change Your World. So this is from the book, Change Your World. He says, in 1931, the phrase, the American dream, was coined by James Truslow Adams in his book, The Epic of America. 
During the Great Depression, James Truslow Adams saw the great promise of the United States, where people could rise up and pursue their potential without many of the societal or economic barriers people in other parts of the world had battled for generations. James Truslow Adams wrote, The American dream is that dream of a land in which life should be better and richer and fuller for every man, with opportunity for each according to ability or achievement. It is a difficult dream for the European upper classes to interpret adequately, and too many of us ourselves have grown weary and mistrustful of it. It is not a dream of motor cars and high wages merely, but a dream of social order in which each man and each woman shall be able to attain to the fullest stature of which they are innately capable and be recognized by others for what they are, regardless of the fortuitous circumstances of birth or position. We believe what has been called the American dream could become every country's dream because everyone desires to reach their potential and live a better life. But there must be a ladder available to them. Does the ladder create the dream? Does the dream create the ladder? The answer may be both, as long as there is hope. When you have hope, the words of Nido Quibane, the president of High Point University, ring true. Your present circumstances do not determine where you can go. They merely determine where you start. Ladies and gentlemen, due to the fact of the concept of the American dream, living in our nation is the goal of thousands of people from other nations. The American dream has survived many things, including and not limited to the 20th century. Depression, two world wars, assassinations of President Kennedy, his brother Robert Kennedy, and the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Then, moving into the 21st century, September the 11th, 2001. Wars in Afghanistan and Iraq. Tension between law enforcement officials and citizens. Protests. Riots leading to destruction of businesses and livelihoods. And of course, the response to COVID-19, which also led to destruction of businesses and livelihoods. However, among all of that, we have seen great inventions made, wonderful entertainment and art created, great books written, yes, I will include sports achievements, incredible scientific achievements, including the creation of a vaccine for COVID-19. As many generations prior to your generation, we are at a crossroads. You are going to need to make choices. The choices each one of you makes are going to determine the future direction of our nation. Even the choice of the future being one based on principles our nation has had since July 4th, 1776, or the future being based on a new set of principles. I would encourage you to choose to continue to improve our nation based on the principles established on July 4th, 1776. You might ask why? Because our nation is improving. All the wrongs our nation has had are being corrected, in part, thanks to those founding principles. Let's just look at the five, quote-unquote, freedoms the First Amendment protects. Speech, religion, free press, right to assemble, and the right to petition the government. You have another stronger set? Of freedoms. Within those freedoms, we abolished slavery. We gave women the right to vote. We have Civil Rights Acts of 1964 and 1968. 
and several other societal advances. All of those are a part of the American dream. As music has a beautiful sense of freedom in spite of boundaries, our nation has a beautiful sense of freedom in spite of the boundaries of the Constitution. For the past four years, your Oakmont teachers and staff have done all they can to, dream, to, let, uh, to get you on a ladder for your opportunity to build your American dream. To build your American dream, use what you have been taught since kindergarten and the principles our nation has enjoyed for hundreds of years. As James Truslow Adams said, as Americans, each of us is given the freedom to increase our abilities and our achievements. Now, with this culmination of your kindergarten through 12th grade education, you will have more freedom to increase your ability and achievement. As the son of two alcoholic parents, an abusive relationship that led to my mom and dad being divorced, as a child being on welfare and Medi-Cal, mom earning less money in a year than it cost for me to attend the University of the Pacific, I want to be recognized by others for what I have accomplished in 55 years and beyond regardless of fortuitous. And remember what fortuitous means. It's happening by accident or chance, rather by design. Regardless of fortuitous circumstances of birth or position, the American way, the American dream, since you have been alive, your high school graduation can be the start of where you are going to go. As many of those who have gone before you Create an American dream where others may enjoy the creation of their American dream. You know, pay it forward. We are very proud of you, class of 2021. In your four years of being in high school, you have endured fires that stopped activities. And of course, you endured the response to COVID-19 that also stopped many activities and changed many activities. We hope those days when you thought, am I seeing the end of the world? The end of the United States? You saw the answer previous generations gave to the same question. Not while I'm alive and not as long as I live in this country. So God bless you, class of 2021. And please, so others may create and live their American dream, create and live your American dream. That would be my graduation speech. That's my commencement speech. I would encourage all of us to have a great summer break. Those who are working, God bless you. I'm glad. I appreciate you working and not sitting on your derriere collecting checks from state and federal governments. Working is a value that we need to return to embracing. So I appreciate those who are working. Um, I do hope, though, that if you have children, that you will get a vacation and spend time with them. Because once we get back to school in August, it's going to seem a little weird not to have people around the house anymore. Um, so do all you can to make every moment count with your children. Uh, having a 27-year-old and a 25-year-old now and a 2-year-old grandson. Time goes by fast. That's why you should begin with the end in mind. Every choice you make is who you are, so choose wisely. Seek first to understand, then be understood. And finally, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And I care about you. I love you. I'm hoping this helps somebody today. Thanks a lot for watching. And finally, I am doing the best I can. I am doing the best I can. I am doing the best I can. God bless you all. Share this with somebody. They might want to see what a public school teacher in California would actually say at a graduation. The American dream is real. People want it. Go get it. Bye.